Hello everybody and welcome back to the Red and Blue Site YouTube channel and it's time for the second Palace preview of the season. It's our first home game against West Ham United. Now I think what I'll be doing on these previews now is each week we'll be starting the video by addressing and looking back at the previous fixture and then obviously going into my thoughts, uh, predicted lineups, um, touching on the opposition and my thoughts on how they're going to approach the game and then obviously find out what you guys think um, in the comment section down below after the video. That's how I want to structure it from now on. So uh, reflecting back on the first game of the season away to Brentford, not how I thought it would go. I thought we'd start off with a solid win, 2-0 away from home. Ambitious away win first game of the season is not an easy thing to do, for especially for a club like Palace. But we've got high expectations going into the season. I think that's fair. I think arguably um, we're thinking... Well, we're aiming for a European spot potentially this season as like the ultimate, the pinnacle, like a seventh or eighth place finish. Um, I think coming 10th again would be a reasonable look at the season, in my opinion. Um, it, but it's hard not to get carried away with how well we finished last season. The manager we got in Glasner and obviously the staff around him and the players we're bringing in for him are definitely players that he wants. Um, and the key has always been keeping the squad together and not losing too many of those big players. And by the big players, I mean the big three, in my opinion, Elise, Eze and Mark Gerhi. Um, with how things have gone since the Brentford game, it looks like we're going to be potentially losing another one of them. Um, Elise has obviously gone to Bayern already, we know that. But Mark Gerhi to Newcastle is looking more and more likely as the days go on. Um, I know they've been back and forth, back and forth, but it looks like that deal will probably end up getting done, especially when you look at us putting bids in for Maxine Lacroix from Wolfsburg, another player who Glasner has had, has, uh, had playing under him in the past and obviously rates very highly. So not too disheartened about um, that player coming in. I would be a little bit about Mark Gay going, um, but if, if Newcastle paid the figure we're looking for, you can't turn that fee down for a centre-back um, as painful as it is. And I know we all want Mark to stay at the club and to try and achieve something awesome together this season. But um, when that, if that money does come in from Newcastle and we hit the superstar fee that Steve Parrish has been um, requesting, um, then you, you can't turn that down. You can't turn that down. So, um, but the shock one for me was what's happened this week or um, earlier in the week. Um, Joachim Anderson, um, fee agreed to go to Fulham. He's doing his medical there at the moment. And £30 million. Again, I think we've got a structure at the club now where if a fee, a bid comes in and it hits a mark. We we have a preconceived mark for our players. Um, that's what it appears to be to me. Like, you have to hit this figure for Mark Gurhey to go. Like, that's what we've said to Newcastle and that's why the, the bids are creeping up and if they hit it, then we'll, we'll accept it. I think that's the same with uh, all the players. There's a fee and once the team hits that fee and a bid, that player will go. Um, I'm, I'm pretty confident in that um, with the way that the bidding has gone and the way the club have been talking. So 30 million for Anderson, I think is good money. 28 years old, he's at his peak at the moment. Um, some people, I did a YouTube short on this and um, on a TikTok um, on this addressing the, the, the Joachim Anderson transfer. And obviously please follow up the socials down below in the description. Um, and a lot of feedback in the comment section on that from you guys, the fans, was that I think this is the time for him to go because he he has got a few more mistakes in him than Mark Gurhey in in a lot of people's opinions in the comment section. Um, he's probably hit his peak. Um, it is a good time to sell in in a lot of people's eyes, and it, it pains me again because I love your commands and I love the the crossfield passes. His distribution from the back is something really unique. It it was like when Mamadou Sakho came in on loan. Um, Mamadou Sakho's first loan spell at the club was unreal. Obviously, the squad was a the the, the skill base of the squad and, and the talent in the squad wasn't as great as it is now and the levels the ability in the squad wasn't as good as it is now so it maybe was he maybe stood out a bit more for what he was doing but he the ability to bring the ball out and to really play those cutting through balls into like strikers or forward players bypassing a whole midfield opposition midfield he was great at that and Joachim Anderson does the same thing but more aerially and like switching the flank and just switching play and creating space for the wingers where we're so dangerous um, and we're going to miss that um, but obviously Oro uh, um, putting in a bid for Orojo I think that's how you pronounce it apologies if it's not the Portuguese centre-back from Benfica if we bring him in and Lacroix that I think that's good business um, replacing our two starting centre-backs with two centre-backs who are more than worthy both have got experience at top level football um, I mean Orojo Oro a Rojo <laughs> at um, Benfica's had Champions League experience um, over the last few years so not the end of the world it's just not ideal I think switching up two of your back three 
going into the the start of the season. Arguably three if Chadi Riyad starts ahead of um, Chris Richards. Um, it's a gamble, but they're players that Glasner and Dougie Friedman want. So I, as and I've always said it, I'm invested in it and I am going to back it if that's what those people want to bring in. I've got no reason to feel like it's the wrong decision. I will go with it and I'll see if it works. Obviously, I'll, I'll support them with it. Um, so that's how I think it was disappointing to lose um, some sloppy goals to concede um, and we were robbed of a wonder goal from Eze. But um, all in all, a slow start. I think players were trying to find fitness. It was the first time we had our first 11 actually playing together properly. Um, I know they played together in our last preseason game for, for the most part, but realistically, I think a lot of players were trying to get up to speed. And Brentford just, um, they looked really good on the counter-attack and caught us out a few times. And that's that, that's the way it goes. You know, it's Premier League football. Sometimes that happens. So going moving forward now to the West Ham game. It's going to be a tough one, but first home game of the season. I'm really buzzing for it. I'll be there and hopefully I'll see a few of you guys there at the game. Um, it'd be great to see some of you guys at the home game. Um, I'm looking forward to it. West Ham, they've had some, a really good summer window. Really look like really look strong on paper, but similar to us, probably have high ambitions for this season. Really high ambitions um, with the way they have brought in all these players in the summer. For us, it's more like it, it was. It's ambition. It's looking forward to this season and the ambition because of how we finished last season in terms of how we played. For them, I'd say it's more because of the summer window and the ambition they're showing in the transfer market. Um, which is something we've been crying out for for a number of seasons and a lot of people still are. Um, I think we will get a few more signings in, but let's see what happens on that front. Um, but yeah, similar mentalities for the fan bases going into this season and they would have been disappointed to have lost their first home game this season with all the hype around their new signings and the squad that they're building. Um, Aston Villa, very strong team and very hard team to play against, but definitely deserved the win in my opinion watching the game I thought they were the better team throughout and West Ham had little periods here and there but didn't really threaten almost snatched a draw at the end and arguably should have scored Thomas Suchek um, but he couldn't put the ball away and I just feel like they would have been disappointed with that and they'll be looking to bounce back um, I'll go through some of their signings in a minute and and the threat that they pose uh, but looking at Palace I think Another week training together. Another week. I know this. There's a bit of disruption with um, Joachim Anderson leaving and and the hut and all the news around Mark Gurhey, but it's a chance. Of Chaddy Riyad is almost certainly going to start now that Joachim Anderson's on on the way out. Um, and obviously wish him luck at Fulham. Um, I think it's a weird one for him to go to Fulham, but I wish him luck anyway. Um, and I, but I do think it's a chance for us to bounce back from the Brentford game. First game at home. I think at home we're going to get a lot more points this season than away from home. We've been like that throughout our time in the Premier League um, since we got promoted. We definitely very much... Well, there were in the early days when we weren't as strong, when the squad wasn't as strong, we didn't get as many points at home. But definitely in the last few seasons, our home results have been crucial for us. And especially the end of last season, um, the run under Glasner since February so many points at home and less so away from home until we got to the end of the season when teams probably backed off a little bit and we were still going strong. Um, so I think our home form is going to be really crucial this season if we are going to get any success, um, anywhere near the success that we want to see as, as fans and are hoping to see. Um, and hopefully it starts now. We had obviously a fantastic result last season. We batted West Ham towards the end of last season at home. Um, I don't think it'll be the same result this time, but I'm hoping to see a similar sort of performance just on the front foot no fear obviously giving the West Ham respect when we need to but looking to punish them get on them I think we were our press was slightly off against Brentford we got picked apart a little bit too much and West Ham are a stronger side than Brentford and they're going to pick us off as well if we're not careful so I'm sure Glasner knows that and he's spotted those things and we're going to sharpen up in those areas That's at least I hope I think the wing backs weren't in the game anywhere near enough I think Munoz had a very quiet game against Brentford and I think he's going to be looking to get in the game a lot more, um, trying to punish and get press on, pressing on the wingers and the fullbacks, trying to cause mistakes, but also getting the ball more and whipping in crosses. I think that's where he's at his best. Um, he did so well to create the, the own goal that um, we got against Brentford, and that's where he's great, popping up in the box at the back post. Um, Mitchell's starting to do that a lot more now as well. That's what we need. That's what we need, them really coming in those late runs, and I think that's where we can punish West Ham. I think we can catch them out in the, that regard. Well, West Ham are strong, obviously, set pieces. They always have been. Thomas Suchek, the main one. Um, Kilman, one of their new signings at the back, obviously, tall, strong defender. Uh, will He'll be looking to get forward and capitalise on their good, good crosses into the box. They've got a number of players who can put in good deliveries. Looking at West Ham as well, you've got to address their new signings. Obviously, Max Kilman uh, in Euros, I've got this because I've got it up on transfermarket.co.uk. Um, 47.5 million for Max Kilman, Somerville from Leeds coming in as well. 
big money signing from Leeds, 29 uh, million euros. Nicholas Folko from Dortmund up front, he's, he's more than likely going to start. Came off the bench against Villa, didn't have much of the ball, but he's one to look out for. Um, Luis Gilherm, from a young 18-year-old from um, Brazil, Pal Palmeiras, he's probably not going to start, but he's one for the future for sure, a skillful Brazilian winger. Juan Bissaka, is this the time he plays against us? His deck, it could be his debut for West Ham if he's fit. That'll be written in the stars for him to either score or assist against us and um, get West Ham to win. But if Juan Bissaka is playing, we always give him a good reception. He's, you know, come through the academy. He's definitely close to our hearts. Definitely me. Um, love Juan Bissaka. Um, Rodriguez on a free from Real Betis and uh, Fodderingham they got as a backup keeper as well on a free transfer. They're, and also um, a loan for um, Todibo from um, Nice, who they obviously played who got some game time against Aston Villa as well some really good signings there some players I think Somerville was someone that we were loosely linked to obviously didn't get in the end but he's going to be the one to look out for Falkrug his aerial ability along with Suchek Kilman they're going to be dangerous and our set pieces defensively haven't been great we've been shaky from them obviously a change in the back line you don't know if that we're going to improve in that area and especially it going forward I can't remember last time we scored from a set piece going forward, but maybe a change in the back line could see that sort of change in, uh, in terms of defensive and offensive um, aerial threat. That would be interesting to see. I think it's going to be a tough game, but the home, being first home game of the season, I think, and the fact that I think we play a lot better at home under Glasner than we do away from home, just in general, I think we deal with the atmosphere a lot better being at home. Um, we deal with the occasion a lot more and we and we just are used, to, obviously, being at home, we have that home advantage. I think West Ham, we look at the bounce back. I could see this being a draw, I'll be honest. with the. I could see it being a score draw, a 2-2 or something like that, maybe a 1-1. I'm going to go with a 1-1 draw. Um, but it could easily go either way, this. This could be any result. I know any. it's a bit of a cop-out because any team in the Premier League can, can get a win against any team. That's the beauty of the Premier League. But the way West Ham lost... Um, and Lopetegui will definitely want to try and bounce back with a win here. Otherwise, he's already under pressure at that job um, with, with the signings they've had, the money they spent. Um, and Glasner, I'm sure, will want to bounce back with a win as well. Um, so the home advantage, I think, will keep us, uh, will, could edge us ahead. I'm going to predict a 1-1. And I think it's a good draw to get um, against West Ham, a team that look very strong. And just to get the ball rolling points on the board kickstart our season off and show progression that's what i want to see just a, a better team performance than against brentford will be important to me and a sign that we are progressing forward and hopefully we can add some offensive signings get a couple of center backs in that we have been linked to and putting bids in for and all of a sudden it's looking a lot more rosy uh, than it was this time last week when we disappointingly lost against brentford but let me know your thoughts down below guys please comment your thoughts in the comment section down below subscribe if you're new to the channel more content coming thick and fast this season you won't want to miss it i love doing these videos for you guys and i really love the support so thank you so much please like share the video subscribe if you're new follow the socials in the description down below and let me know your thoughts on the game score predictions and how you think the game will go i really really am hoping for a win let's keep our fingers crossed thank you guys and i'll see you all next time